If you're looking for a good primary care practice, look no further than right here in Hartford County to Medical Health Group, located at 1415 South Mountain Road in Suite 100, right behind the Wawa in Joppa, Maryland. They are doctors you can trust. Call them at 410-918-0777 or visit them at M. HG, that's Medical Health Group, mhgdoctors.com. On this episode of the Harford County Living Podcast, Harford uh, County Living Podcast, episode number 31, I um, had the opportunity to sit down uh, with uh, several people uh, for this podcast, and this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, luckily, I, I met Sheldon Bear, who is the composer and founder of the Susquehanna Symphony Orchestra. I'm sure you've heard him on a couple of the other podcasts before. Um, and he is doing a concert June 3rd uh, called Community of Hope. And they're raising awareness about this opioid addiction, uh, which is not just in the county, but it's throughout the country. Um, also had uh, two pastors on there, uh, Adam Schellenbarger, who, who uh, co-hosted this with me. And he was kind enough to let us record at his church because... Uh, you know, our studio is getting revamped right now. Um, and Pastor Steve Smith also had Lyle Garrity from uh, the Joppatown Lions Club on this. But um, very, very dear friend of mine, Teresa Stepp, um, agreed to come on. And she had lost her son uh, to this. And uh, very, very uh, eye-opening that the facts and everything that's, that comes out in this episode, I think it's going to help raise awareness and hope and open more people's eyes about the problem going on. Um, and in six months, you know, hopefully we'll come back, we'll do it again, and that number will drop. Uh, so, uh, and you know, take a look, please. I know it's long, it's uh, almost an hour and a half, but it's worth the listen. This is a very, very, very good podcast that uh, brings out a lot um, about the opioid uh, addiction problem here, uh, like I said, not just in the county, but uh, throughout the country. You are listening to the Harford County Living Podcast with Rich Bennett. Thank you for coming, and please send any suggestions or comments to podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. The Harford County Living Podcast is produced for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at harfordcountyliving.com. Come back often, and feel free to add the podcast to your favorites, RRS feed, or iTunes. All links are in the show notes. Now, let's join Rich Bennett and his special guest. Like to welcome everybody to the Harford County Living Podcast. Got a full table today. Um, Sheldon Bear, again, who's been on like a hundred times, is with us, uh, along with Pastor Steve Smith, Lyle Garrity, who's been a few times as well, and somebody I thought I wanted to ask him back on, but Adam, now I'm going to get the name right, Sheldon Barger, and of course, Teresa. St- Actually, everybody's been on at least once, because Teresa's been on once or twice before. Once, mm-hmm. once? okay. Steve the Rookie. Still, oh, oh, that's right. Okay, so he's the rookie. Um, very, very important podcast. Uh, I just want to throw two things out there real quick before I even mention what it's about. But um, and of course, once I throw these two facts out there, I'm sure you know people listening will know what it's about. But, uh, this comes from uh, HHS.gov, which is the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, I believe it is. Uh, almost 80% of heroin users reported misusing prescription opioids prior to using heroin. And now, of course, it's national. And 100, this is the one that really floored me. 116 people a day die from opioid-related drug abuse, uh, drug overdoses. Um, which is, that's, of course, the podcast, what we're talking about. And we're talking about the United States, right? This is just the United the States, States, right. Yeah. So, um, opioid awareness, and Sheldon's has a big concert coming up June 3rd? That's right, Sunday, June 3rd. Uh, community, community for Hope or Community of Hope? 
Community of Hope. Community of Hope. Pastor Steve came up with the with the title. Okay. So, yeah. Um, which is helping to raise awareness o- o- awareness uh, right. for opioid and um, there, Teresa is here. Who and what's your the, the heart? What's that called? Uh, Open Hearts Project for Opioid Awareness. Okay. And, and people can actually buy the hearts, right? They can. Um, I have an Etsy shop, which is Open Hearts Project mm-hmm. number 40A. Um, and they are a $9 donation. And the money right now, this year in 2018, is all, all of the um, profit is going to the Helping Up Mission in Baltimore, Maryland. They do um, drug... Uh, help uh, homeless men. They've actually just started with women. They now have a women's program as well. But it was where my son, you know, started his recovery process many years ago, and they cost nothing. They welcome in men that are homeless and have drug addiction problems, and they try to make them whole through a spiritual program. And so since my son was there and I'm an artist, I made the decision uh, in January to focus my year on charity and to try to give back and, and you know, while raising awareness and reducing that negative stigma. It affects sure. a lot of people. Yes. Hey, I think that's another thing. A lot of people don't, and I know it affected you, mm-hmm. but a lot of people don't realize how much it affects family and also friends, mm-hmm. too. And I think everybody knows somebody that has. If they don't, they will. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. And we need to try to uh, curtail that, you know, stop it in any way we can. Well, I was going to say, tell us about the concert real quick, because I know uh, right after you talk about it, because otherwise we're going we're gonna to go forget off. about the concert, because I know so, this is... The concert is just um, a way of getting people together. Susquehanna Symphony is our, our community orchestra here, and we always open the Bandshell series in Bel Air, the William Humbert Amphitheater. It's close to the library in, in Bel Air. And we open the series, it's every Sunday night over the summer, and then Wednesday nights in July and August, you know, there's movies and stuff. Bel Air's got a lot going on. Right. Uh, so we open it on Sunday, June 3rd at 7 o'clock, and my thinking was, well, we're going to have a concert, but why can't we have some opioid addiction awareness to go along with it? And... Because I think as leaders in the community, we need to do this as much as we can. Right. So the concert will be happening, but my thinking is we're outside hoping that people that are maybe not comfortable in coming into a church where they're not familiar or even a school will come outside. I don't care if they come into the concert, not in, you know, it's outside. Right. Come, come sit and listen to the concert or not. That's not the point. The point is that they learn about opioid uh, addiction. And I thought I knew a good bit about it. But then at our church, Emory United Methodist, where Pastor Steve is, they had an evening back in January about opioid addiction uh, Mm -hmm. awareness. And I learned a whole lot more. And they had a lot of organizations, which he'll go over, because they'll be at our concert on on, uh, June 3rd. So uh, the only thing, and, and we do, you know, it's a light light concert. We're going to do, do some Star Wars and some things like that. And I have a, a young man coming in to help me conduct because I'm getting old. So, um, but it's, it's so important to have people learn about opioid addiction because mm-hmm. there is no demographic. Rich, poor, right. doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter the age. Either. Doesn't matter. Age, Right. So we need to get the word out, and the more we get the word out, the better chance we have of, of trying to uh, reduce the risk. And at this point, we don't have uh, a venue. We're hoping for Bel Air High School, but we don't have a place if it rains. So uh, just keep our fingers crossed. Right. Uh, that'll be up on ssorchestra.org for the Susquehanna Symphony, or just Google Susquehanna Symphony and... And that'll be up, you know, on that day. We have to decide by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So who's going to be there, I guess, that people can talk to? I got that. Okay. <laughs> um, some of the groups that will be there will be the Office of Drug Control Policy will be there. Okay. Uh, the Harford County Sheriff's Department. Uh, Char Hope Foundation, which is a foundation that was started by 
Derek Hopkins. He had a heart for the addicted. Uh, he went through some things with some fa family member and um, came to our church and said, hey, you know, we have an empty house, which is a parsonage, which I don't need. And they came with us with opening a house, a sober living house for women. Mm -hmm. And the church came through and unanimously uh, voted it in. So we have that going on. We have four women there. And we also, they just opened up another one up in uh, the end of 165 and 543 uh, for another one that's going to use agriculture, farm animals to help get uh, women acclimated back into life. Um, and I can go more into that later. So Charho Foundation will be here, the state police. Rage Against Addiction, uh, Turning Point Project, The Hard Truth of Addiction, that's what Sheldon was talking about. We're doing these quarterly symposiums at the church, bringing the real truth about addiction, bringing experts in to talk about this problem. This one coming up, which is in August, will have a two-part. It will be one for parents and adults and one separation for, for uh, the younger generation that they can sit and talk and ask questions. Uh, it's been very successful. Uh, also, the Maryland Center for Veterans, uh, the Ashley Addiction Treatment Center, Addiction Connection, and also the Maryland Coalition of Families will be there. So there will be a lot of resources. I truly wow. believe that when you bring community together, when I'm talking church, you're talking government, you're talking just the average family, the, you know, the community, it's going to take the community to solve this problem. And it's going to take people coming together and breaking down the walls, you know, it's, you know, breaking down the walls of the churches, bringing, breaking down the walls of the government and saying, look, we just need to come together and sit around and try to figure this thing out. And if families and people think, well, it's not going to happen to me, it's in that part of the, the, the county, it's, you know, it's on that side of the tracks, whatever the case may be, you're sadly mistaken. It's everywhere and yeah. it's affecting everyone. To give you an example, when I first got into this and, and, and really been involved with this, the roots to this addiction problem are wider than you could ever imagine. Just when you think, wow, we can attack this, well, then there's another route that leads to families, and there's another route that leads to people that deal with this on a constant basis, like your, your paramedics, uh, your police officers, right. all those that have to deal with this. Funeral directors, families, widespread. Um, there's so many roots. So... In anything, any problem, whether it's this or, or crime or, or whatever the case would be, it's going to take a community to wrap themselves around this and get, and this is where I come in, to get the awareness out there that there is help, there is people that understand, there are people here that have been in there and have seen the light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope in this addiction problem, and we've got to attack it, and we just can't sit back. It says evil thrives when good men and women do nothing. And we have got to be proactive in this to try to get this message out and get these numbers down to where one is too many. Yeah, so, I agree. So hopefully through the Susquehanna Symphony Orchestra and the Community of Hope, which will be on June 3rd at 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? Uh, right. We will bring this out, and there will be people and experts there to answer questions about anything that they have about this problem. This Actually, we're going to start with a speaker a little bit before 7, so we encourage people to come out. Absolutely. There'll be a food truck. People can grab yep. by D. Yep. But the important thing is to learn about uh, opioid addiction. Absolutely. And knowledge, gaining knowledge is so important. Absolutely. Knowledge is powerful. And where, <laughs> where to go for answers. Because what if your neighbor, maybe it's not you, what if right. your neighbor needs right. help? Well, this is where you go for answers. Let me make a call for you or let me contact you, put you in contact with somebody. This isn't a problem you just say, well, it'll go away. It's we just can't sweep this under the rug. It's not going to go well, away. Well, hopefully it will. Yeah, eventually, it, hopefully it will. Time. But it's going to take a community, it's going to take people yeah. coming together and, and talking about this. You can't keep it yeah. hidden in your family. No. There are resources out there. There are people that care about where you are in this problem. And we need to get this awareness out. One thing we really need to do is pray that it doesn't rain on June 3rd. Please. <laughs> but praying daily yes. for no rain. So. Thank yeah, you. Where is this again? Because it's at the band shell behind the Bel Air Library. And Shamrock. truly behind Shamrock Park. Right. Okay. But truly behind the Bel Air Police Office and the Bel Air Town Hall. But it's at Shamrock Park? Yeah, there's a there's a band shell. It's yes. called the William yes. Humbert yes. Okay. band shell. It's an amphitheater. Right. It was a 
the person that started a lot of the July 4th thing, started the Bellar Community Band and stuff. Great guy. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's there. And, and we usually get a good audience, as do other organizations. I mean, there's a lot of music there over the summer. So I just thought it would be nice to... Let's just, let's just have uh, organizations there where people can go by and pick up information and talk to people who are knowledgeable. Amen. Yeah. yeah and it, that's one of the things. and Because um, I you always see, I guess it's the Sheriff's Department that goes around doing the presentations. But it, other people in the community going around doing presentations, I think it's key too. I think, well, Adam, you might be able to answer this. But the only time I've seen it here is when I think it was the sheriff's office came and talked at two of the schools, or maybe one of the schools. We uh, one of the things that we've been talking about in Joppa Town High School has been um, the the county does a really good job of trying to present things to various people. They have that addicted play that they yeah. do every year. But one of the disappointing things that we've had, we've, we've asked them to come down to the Route 40 corridor and just say, hey, put it in Joppatown High School or Edgewood High School because it's at North Hartford High School and it's at Mount Zion uh, United Methodist Church in Bel Air. But it never gets down here. So it's something where I, I would hope that this kind of stuff makes it down here. But um, we do know that there are other parts of the county that tend to suffer a little bit more with this particular issue, but that doesn't mean that it's not in this community, this right. part of the county either. So it's it's definitely something that we, we've we been trying for. Um, one thing that I think is important with this, and I think it's good that you guys are, are having this concert, that you're basically taking all these steps and putting these resources out in front of people. The word, I think, that was missing from that conversation just for people who don't think that this affects them is proactivity. You Amen. need to be proactive because mm -hmm. if you wait until it's a problem, it may already be too late. Um, if, if this conversation starts before there's a problem, if this conversation starts as a preventative measure, the success rates are much, much higher, right. much higher. Well, I'd, I'd just like to add that um, my personal story um, Recovery is hard. Yeah. Recovery is forever. And, um, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I think people ask me personally um, what I think can be done or how it can be done. And, and your best bet is to try to get the young people. There's going to be a whole generation of kids coming up without parents. Um, That's true. I, there's, and, and how are these kids going to feel? And, um, you know, they're being raised again by grandparents, by aunts, by uncles. And so um, there's... In my personal situation, um, one of the things that I learned about opioid addiction that I was unfamiliar with is that my son was clean. My son had recovered. And I think that, you know, when a certain amount of time goes by, we can get complacent and start to think, well, they've done this well. Well, he's got a job. Well, he's got a baby. Well, all of these wonderful things are happening and life looks normal from the outside. Um, recovery is fragile. It's yeah. day to day to day. And if you're not personally invested in that and, and you know, keeping your, your finger on the pulse, it's gone in a day. When I got the phone call, I was shocked. Uh, I had prepared myself for a long time that I was going to lose my son. Then he got clean. He got help. He was, his life turned around. Everything was amazing. And out of the blue comes this call. So we're in a situation now where drug dealers are killing our kids. Um, <clears throat> this goes beyond. It may start with pills which is where it starts most of the time. It starts with painkillers. How do parents, what is the most basic thing anyone can do? Lock up your medicines, okay? Yeah. Because you might not abuse them, but how do you know your nephew or your niece or your neighbor or somebody isn't coming into your house? Everybody uses a bathroom. And these people are selling pills. It's cheap. And then it doesn't work anymore. And they go, and they now have a habit. And addiction is physical, okay? The physical, I, I, I'm really... When I read stories um, about people that are dying from detoxing in jail because jails aren't helping them, that tells you how extensive the problem is. Um, I see parents. I'm in every group with every parent that has had a loss, and you see it first and foremost. We are these soldiers. We're the ones front line dealing with it. You know, you might have politicians or governments or other people behind you saying, yeah, we want to do something. 
but it's the parents that are foot mm-hmm. soldiers. They're out there. They're the ones that are taking the, the, the bullets right up right. front. So we're mm-hmm. feeling it. We're seeing it. We're living through the addiction. That's the other part of it. And the vast majority of this starts with pain meds. It starts with opioids that are in everybody's medicine cabinet. So when I see agencies, you know, these, these days, well, come bring your medicines. We don't know. We're told not to flush them. We're told not to trash them. You know, and they sit in cabinets, and kids are getting a hold of them, and that's where it starts. And um, for me personally, um, you know, my wanting to get rid of the negative stigma, I want to lose the word junkie. If there's one thing I can do, it's to stop dehumanizing people that have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? Maybe there was a choice initially, but there's choices in everything initially initially from the beginning. That has changed. Now you have the problem. Let's not dehumanize it. Let's not vilify it. Um, with people, these are people, these are people's children, they're people's grandchildren, they're, they're people's, they're, if nothing else, they're parents. And these children are going to grow up without these kids. I mean, without their parents, these kids are going to grow up. And what are they going to become? So it's high time we all do something because we're all going to have to do something. The only, and, and another footnote I just want to make on this, which is something that maybe somebody hearing this might be able to make a difference. The thing that floored me The day I lost my son, because I lost him, most addicts don't die in a hospital. Okay, they die on the street, they die in a home, they die somewhere. Right. And uh, my first thought was I wanted to donate my son's organs. That option wasn't available to me because my son was at the coroner and they didn't know what to do. And I'm like, well, wait a second, I want to donate. He's 26 years old. He had good eyes, he had a good heart, he had good lungs. He had good. There's how many people are going to die? How many people could I have saved by donating his organs? And the coroner's office told me, yeah, well, we, we don't know. Call, make a wish or call. And I thought, well, what? somebody's going to benefit from this? Yeah. They put it back in my lap, and I didn't know. And you have, and this is time. This is time sensitive. This isn't, I can get right. to this next yeah. week. I didn't know. What, and, and I'm dealing with grief. I'm overwhelmed by everything else going on. This thrown back at me is not the proper. So yeah. maybe somebody out there can make a difference there. If we're going to have this, can we benefit? Can it benefit somebody? I hope so. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of. You know, and with all these groups, I'm going to be there. I'm a parent. I didn't know about this. If you hadn't been my neighbor, you know, if I had my connection to you, if you had to know my personal story, I wouldn't be here. So I just learned to get about rage against the addiction. Um, you know, we were at Bonefish Grill last night. This thing is vast. It's huge. And, um, you know, I as a parent, how do I want to make a difference? Every little way I can. Right. Save one, one person, one parent, not to be me. Amen. And getting the word out helps a lot, too. You know, we see, the, we see these numbers out in front of the sheriff's department, in front of the state police, and, and around the county of, of overdoses and, and those that have died. We've got to realize, yeah, a lot of people see these numbers, and all their numbers, you know. They're, they're not. You know, oh but there is so much more behind these numbers than, than meets the eye. This problem is bigger than most people can even imagine how big it is. And, and you made a great point. Your name is Pastor Adam. 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 Proactivity is is key. You know, it starts right in our own kitchen table. Parents, grandparents, whoever raising these kids, you have got to know what your kids are doing. Right. You have to know. Yeah. You have to be. You know, and I've heard it. And I and I said this at a funeral of a young man not too long ago. You know, kids are saying, "Well, I need my space." I'm sorry, the days of the space are over. You got to you, keep you have to yeah. be in their face and in their space and know who they're talking to. Social media is is everywhere. I mean, you have it can be good. But it can, it can be also good. It can be also bad. be deadly. Right. Um, you know, you have Snapchat. I don't know all these things. Facebook and, and all these things that they're talking and, and back and forth and and, and, and this popularity thing in, in school. You know, you have to dress a certain way. You got to have this and that and other thing. Parents, look, I, I know it's hard being parents, it's hard being grandparents, but there's going to have to be these words in the kid's face, no. It's harder to lose them. Mm-hmm. So because my daughter, last them. last August, my 18-year-old, uh, had some teeth out. Mm-hmm. And it was bad. It was down, you know, one wisdom tooth, they could see the nerves and stuff, so they gave them her mm-hmm. opioids. Mm-hmm. So that was on a Thursday. Tuesday morning, she was still asking for an opioid, for uh, whatever it was, Oxycontin Mm -hmm. or whatever, Mm -hmm. for her pain. So I got on the phone to the oral surgeon's office and said, she's still asking for it, but I'm really hesitant to give it to her. Mm -hmm. So Thursday to Tuesday. And he said, 
oh no, you know, the nurse said, no, no, you just give her a seat of medicine. Mm -hmm. Right. So why are there still a bunch of pills mm -hmm. in the right. container? Right. So I took the container and hid it where nobody is going to find it, and then later put it in the box. There's two boxes right by where the concert's going to be. Yeah. You can put. Drop, you need to. You can drop them in, but people have to but go there. Drop but them here's in. what I have to say. This is some something that's really important to addiction that a lot of people need to recognize when they're speaking about addiction. No one knows who carries that addictive uh, quality. Absolutely. You, no. you, you could have five people at a table and there's something inside of your brain, your chemistry, that already is predisposed to addiction and you don't mm. know it. So is that your, grand, did you say it was your daughter? My daughter. Your yeah. daughter. Mm -hmm. So here's the problem when they administer drug meds, okay? These meds, these pain medications, mm -hmm. oxycodone and all these things that have the opioid. You don't know. Okay, until, and, and that's a hard way to find out. So you're yeah. being responsible. A lot of people don't ask those questions. You can't ask people to be smarter because they're just not going to be smarter. Are they asking the right questions when you go to a doctor's office? Are we deciding to give opioids last? Because you could play devil's advocate on this, and, and the people that are starting to hate the junkies are the people that are now not able to get pain medicines that they need because the pendulum is now swinging the other way and everybody's overreacting. Mm, right. So most of these drugs have, a, have a, a propensity for addiction at some point in time. Let's say benzodiazepines any, or Xanax. If you're on Xanax for two weeks, it's addictive. I don't care who you are. Yeah. But then, okay, so now add this. Well, who already has this gene, this whatever it is? And I'm not a medical person, but I do know that just like alcohol... You can go out and drink, you can go out and drink, you can't drink anything because as soon as you start drinking, something is triggered in your brain that now that addiction is in full swing. That's the problem with judgment. The problem with judgment is that people that think that addiction is a choice don't understand that you don't have that choice. And it could be something that your parents did when they were younger. I don't know what turns it on and what turns it off. But the bottom line is people don't realize that they have that addiction problem until they're already addicted. Right. And that brings it's us... It's like Russian roulette. It is. It's very true. And it, it, you know, speaking of my own experience with alcohol and smoking um, and even eating, to be quite honest, it can be broken down to that. You know, you, you grab onto certain things and uh, alcohol for one. Um, now, I wasn't a heavy liquor drinker. I was in my 20s, but... Um, I got to a point right around age 30 where it was beer every night. And it wasn't just one or two beers. It was six, and then it went to 12, Extreme. and then it went to 24. Mm -hmm. and I had that Irish blood, so I couldn't drink a lot of beer. But that <laughs> became a nightly thing for the next 20 years. And I finally woke up and said, you know, this is not doing me any good. It's affecting all. But it was a, just an addiction thing where, it, where it, it just became second nature. Like you come home, you drink. You know, you drink a, a Coke or a glass of water or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, I, it was beer for me, no matter what, if I ate or not. Same thing with the smoking. Now Same. I have fentanyl. Yeah. Right. Because that's what's happened with right. that. Yeah. That addiction is now you have something in there that's poisoning people. Mm -hmm. And so if, you know, I encourage anybody that has Netflix to watch the episode. You can, you know, go onto your Netflix and the show is called Dope, D-O-P-E. Yeah. And you can easily find which one it is with Harford County. And you can actually look and see how it how it comes through Baltimore, how it comes into Harford County, because the app, as ridiculous as it sounds, you you see the problem is being in the city, and they say oh, it's in the counties, but the dealers, the actual dealers that are bringing the drug in, are here in Harford County. Right. Yeah. Now the people in Baltimore might be cutting it or lacing it, but let's face it, we've now evolved to murder in some of these cases because these people, yeah. it's not the addiction even that's killing them anymore; it's what's what, what it's laced with. Right. So you started taking a painkiller. Little did you know, at age 15, or you got your parents' pills, it doesn't always start with just a surgery, and you take one or two, and now you're hooked. And that becomes three or four, and your friends, oh, but they can put it down. Yeah. Your friends didn't have the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now you're chasing this. Now your pills are too expensive. Now, the next thing you know, my son died of fentanyl poisoning. As did, and I think that our, our, our male lady, and the, there's so many people, it touches so many people, and the thing that upsets me the most is it's still in the shadow, yes. because people are still judgmental. Are people talking about me? Are people saying really behind my back, oh, her son, her son was a junkie, her son was a, I don't know, because I do feel it sometimes. I've lost friends. I've lost friends, why? Because the stigma is real. 
because people want to pat me on the back and say, I'm so sorry for your loss. And then they want to turn around and they want to judge me behind. And that's what the good part about the awareness part is because we are breaking down Barriers. as it starts to affect people yeah. and their personal stories. Oh, well, my son wasn't a junkie or my daughter just took, now all of a sudden something different. Okay. But unfortunately, this is like anything else. It has to affect, it has to affect people to make a difference because as much as I would love to say, I trust our politicians, you have to look at where the agendas are, you yeah. know? So I appreciate the church really is the meaning behind the concert. You know, mm -hmm. these people really have a true vested genuine interest in helping people um, and if you you know where you go lead and the people will follow so if that means that our politicians in order to remain in office or do what they want to do have to jump on board right. then jump on then right. benefit me yeah okay then yeah. benefit me so judging is easy yes actions are difficult right exactly and you brought another point you know this addictive behavior we're having so many and we had this part of our uh corporate i mean hard truth of addiction we had up at Chesapeake in our NICU unit. How many newborns are born into an addictive yeah. state? Um, oh, wow. And I know that oh, that's what's medical. personally right. affected me. And what, how that determines them down the road as they grow older. I mean, we had a brain expert come in and talk about mm -hmm. what opioids did to the frontal lobe of their brain. It just basically dissipates it. And wow. And so. Here are these kids, on no fault of their own, being brought in a situation that either parents or grandparents, whatever the case may be, have to be on top of, have to be watching their kids and grandkids' behavior, their their ups, their downs, their over and outs, because we don't know what's going to happen down the road. Do you think that it's any coincidence that there are more schizophrenics born now than there ever were before? Mm. The drugs from the 60s and 70s and those kinds of things that were going on change your brain chemistry. Right. Now, I have another son. My older son is um, a low-functioning schizophrenic. Right. And I wonder about, okay, so how is this? How does this, where does this manifest? Where does this come from? Right. But they weren't doing the studies on the brains that they're doing now with right. these children. Right. So now these, these parents and grandparents that have these kids now have to guard even, what kind of mental illness is this going to bring right. about? or show in the next, because I can tell you, I thought my son was normal up until 17, 18 years old. 23, I think, is when we really started. We had him diagnosed. But a lot of these things, the symptoms, the the, the they don't show up. I mean, he graduated high school. He right. seemed normal until 23. Everything changed for right. me. So these children, we don't even know what's coming. I don't think we know exactly. what's coming, no. because now your brain that runs everything, could right. there be physical conditions right. that come because your involuntary things right. are somewhere affected? What diseases? So it's really important because it just I love that thing that you said about the, um, when you said when we started about evil people. And what, oh, what was evil that? thrives when good men and women do nothing. That, I love that. I love that because there, there is the mantra right there. Oh, oh and, and the thing is we can't sugarcoat this thing. You know, and this is why we came out with this hard truth. It's got to be put in a way where it almost shocks you. Oh my goodness, this is in our backyard. This is down the street. This is in our schools. This is, you know, this is everywhere. It's everywhere. This is this is a countywide, statewide, countrywide problem. And we and and there's a lot of people out there that want to want to get involved, but just don't know how. I'm telling you. If you want to get involved, you want to have a voice. There are places out here. Come to this concert. It is there. Um, there will be answers. There will be experts that have been there, done that. You've been there, done that. You know what it is to, mm -hmm. to see the progress of your own son go through the whole... And then here we are. And here's the other, other thing, you know, I hear from young kids. Well, it's my body. I can do what I want. Yeah. Think about this. The people that affects yeah. behind you, you know. Mom, dad, grandparents, aunts, uncles, the community, um, um, paramedics, whatever the case may be. You think you're not hurting anybody but yourself? You know, this is much bigger than that. And I hope, and this is my prayer for the, this county, is, is that we're reaching the kids as young as we can. Because it's in middle school, and I hate to, you know, I hate to blow this county apart. It's in our middle schools. Mm -hmm. There's kids that are addicted in middle school. And so we really, really got to get the awareness and get it to the schools, get it to 
wherever we are. Talk about it. Talk around a dinner table. Wherever it is, there's always a place to get this information out. And, and don't be shocked. Parents, grandparents, don't be shocked if your child comes to you and says something good. The, the last thing you do is to get upset with them and get mad and stuff. Take a deep breath, count to 10, and talk about this. Because the last thing we want to do is be judgmental and, and all of a sudden come down on their world and, and blow this thing completely apart. We so, need to be together. So this. they say, okay, so I'm aware. So now what? Because I would think the biggest problem after that is once you have the problem, what do you do? Exactly. Where do you go? Exactly. Because yeah. I know I hear one of the things that you, you join groups, Facebook, social media is the quickest place to go find people like mm -hmm. yourself. So I watched the one of the groups that I like the most on Facebook, the Faces of Opioids. I watched this group uh, from February or, or March of 2017 uh, to 18 have 33,000 members. Most of those people are already addicted, and they're fighting for their recovery, and most don't know the resources, where to go, what to do. So here I have this problem. Parents quickly become overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. You know, and, and it's not good enough to, to, to figure it out after the fact. Yeah. Okay, great. Now I know. My son is dead. Perfect. All I can do at this point is help somebody else and hope that... That they don't have to live in that legacy. You know? Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay. So I, uh, through my ministry at this church, I do lots of different things. It's, you know, nothing's the same. I go to government meetings. I go to school PTA meetings. I go to, uh, we, we host the homeless shelter yeah. here. That's um, where I each, you. There we go. That's it. <laughs> um, so each one of these things, believe it or not, all of these things are affected by this this problem, this opioid yeah, problem. Absolutely. And so when I go to the, the government meetings, that's where you'll deal with some of the thing the things about drugs coming in from Baltimore into Harper County. Or if you live in another county, if you live in Baltimore, if you want to try to prevent that, that's where you can go to start that problem. If you have a child, if you're concerned about that child, or if you're in the community and, and you just want to try to keep this out of your community. I think you're right, Steve, about keeping things out of out of the hands of kids. Go get involved in a PTA. I was at a PTA meeting last night at Joppa Town High School. We had six people there. Oh. Only one of them was a parent. That's that was sad. last night? It was That's last sad. night. Last night. The third Monday of every month is Joppa Town High School PTA meetings, and we, we had one parent uh, out of the whole high school. We had two community members. We had the teacher and the principal and one student. And then we had one mom. Um, when we have a homeless shelter, we have people who are addicted every single year. And we have resources. We have the ability to get them help. Um, when people, unfortunately, if, if people die, you know, there are resources for the people who remain. And I think the thing that's, that's the common thread through all of it is none of this is a thing that you have to go through alone. Amen. I, Amen. There are people in every single one of those groups that are already dealing with this problem. If you think you're going to be alone, if you think you want to stay out of it, you don't need to worry about that stigma from people who are knowledgeable about it because the people who are knowledgeable about it, who are working on it, know that it's not something to be embarrassed about. It's something to confront and bring out into light. Because if you, if you try to shove it away, if you try to even keep your kids away from it because you want to protect them, ultimately what's happening is they could get blindsided by something that they don't even understand is coming their way. If, if you expose your kids to the realities of this problem, if you expose the people you love to the realities of this problem, if you expose your friends and your neighbors to the realities of this problem, it, <coughs> it will help to erode that stigma even further to realize that this is not something <clears throat> that any one person or any one family or any one group or any one faction of the society, be it government or schools or churches or homeless programs or social program programs like that or morgues or anything can deal with by themselves. This is a, as you've been saying, Pastor Steve, this is a whole community thing and even if you don't think it's your problem, it's going to touch something that you're you're very involved in. I, I love that this has given me a voice yeah. because I have zero shame. I always hope to be the person in the room right. when someone says something because 
um, it's their ignorance that I and, and I don't want to confront in a hostile manner. Right. I just want to turn that mirror around, you know, and I want to say, let's, you know, I, I, no matter what, I'm really proud of my son. I'm proud of my son because while he may not have graduated with honors or he may not have, you know, changed the world in, in certain capacities, he changed lives. He was down in the gutter with the people that needed it. And when he died, I had no idea. So many people came to me and said, your son helped me do this and your son helped me. As a parent, I am proud that, mm -hmm. that my boy was able to do something good for people that, yeah. that other people threw away. And that's what we have to stop doing. There needs to be some huge degree of compassion in this. And to say, because nothing will spin me around quicker again, that if, if nothing else, I'm out to, to dissolve the word junkie. Right. I just think labeling someone and stigmatizing it in that manner says to me that that person is so far removed from reality that you have no idea where these people come from, how they got here, but what you are doing is you're turning a cheek and you're in denial, and that's going to kick you somewhere down the road because yeah. we all know somebody, and if you don't, you will. You absolutely exactly. will. Right. And it's, you know, stepping back, uh, first, uh, one thing I want to say is that above and beyond that, I mean, your son left a legacy. His he child. did. Absolutely. And that, and that, oh, that, yeah. You know, that child's going to grow and, and, and be, you know, like like every other child is going to be uh, just that much better right. as mm -hmm. they grow. Absolutely. Um, I can't wait for her to smile at me when she sees me. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but stepping back, um, you know, with the social media and the, and the, and the parents and uh, and I've watched this over my lifetime, adult lifetime, is that progressively uh, parents are becoming more uh, of, of their children's buddies, friends, mm -hmm. yeah. rather than a parent. Taking the words out of their <clears> mouth. And so, you know, we had this discussion a little bit before the, the show started where, where you know, certain uh, young men turn to gangs as their fathers. Well, kids, children are turning to child, uh, social media as mm -hmm. their parents. Right. Their 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 uh, friends, the, the Kardashians right. and and Hollywood, and all the rest. I mean, their advice and what they do means far more than what their their mother and father do. And the so, talk shows, and talk that's shows. Shame. Well, they're the even the TV shows. Their the perception they're more, isn't real. Yeah. They don't so, live in the lives no, that they live. They're reliable, and, 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 right. and they don't have the cognitive uh, cognitive ability at fourteen, fifteen. And 16, even 17 year olds. Amen. Yeah. Um, you know, you hear them say, well, it, it, it's, it's not going to affect me. Um, I'm not going to do it. Or, you know, it's my body. I do what I want. Kind of thing. Um, they don't understand what they're saying. You know, they're just regurgitating what they, 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 they right. you know, they hear. We all did it to some extent. Mm -hmm. we're, um, we're sheltered. Our brains just don't, the mortality, yeah. we don't have that level. As a young person, you don't connect with. Mortality. Exactly. exactly. And, right. and that's where the parents have got to. Now, I'm not a parent, but so I'm, I'm just, you know, just uh, relaying life's experience with right. uh, family and children. friends. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to be a parent. To yeah. Right. Amen. See, but it's it, if, if you if, if you target the parents and change that mindset. Um, and this is much deeper than we're going to discuss here. But um, and you begin to change that mindset. And uh, I mean, right down to the to, you know, uh, I have a sister that that turns off her children's uh, cell phones at, at 7 o'clock at night. There's nothing that goes on after that. Um, if you start there, I think you'll begin, at, uh, a small beginning, but begin to arrest some of the problems. Right? So your message is to be present. Be present. Mm -hmm. yes. be present. There you go. Be it's present. as simple as that. It, be as present. Simple as that. And be a part, as you said, be a part of your, your child's life. And mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll see that those choices are wrong, and hopefully they will make those choices um, if you allow their friends yeah. to be their guides, their conscience, right. you can bet right. that it's not going to go well because right. they just right. don't have the developmental mindset to, to be able to make decisions that are smart. Right. And it's right. okay to have your house to be a hangout house mm -hmm. because you not only keep an eye on your own, mm -hmm. but you know what what's coming in. The other is every Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. and that's a, and it's important for your child to go to other yeah. houses too. But to, to hang out rather than hang out on the social media, to hang out together and talk. And it's okay for adults to talk. So to we need to get rid kids. of that. Not my circus. Not my monkeys. <laughs> not my circus. It's not my monkeys. It's a mentality yeah. where yeah. if it doesn't affect me, it's yeah. not my problem. Uh, but they are so, our monkeys. But they right? are. And I do yeah, think right. that as a responsible human being. 
that you need to look out for other people's kids. You need to keep it. Okay. Uh, if you recognize something that somebody else doesn't, I tell you, you know, it, I, it takes one to know one. Having been around a, a person that used heroin and opioids for seven or eight years, I absolutely can see it. And that's something mm -hmm. that, you know, I watched them post these videos on social media of people nodding out. I watched a video two weeks ago that was local of a, a couple in a car videotaping a worker in a Burger King. Did anybody see this sitting outside nodding out on a curb? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what killed me was the dialogue that was going on inside this car. They were obviously a young couple, a man and a woman and a child. There was a child in the background. They're sitting there. They're cursing. Look at this effing junkie what? nodding oh, out. Geez. I'll never come here and eat again. But I'm listening to the message that the child is hearing in the car because they, they the ignorance that's in there. They're wanting to call police. There, there was not a cord of, of empathy or wanting right. to help this individual or recognizing that this was a problem, that this person needed maybe an ambulance or maybe a yeah. you know you some die. some kind of connection. And then I watched the, the the staff come out of the Burger King, you know, and I just watched this whole thing it was such a debacle as far as no one knowing what to do. Yeah. They oh you need to go home. You need and I'm just tired. I'm just this was there was at least ten people present. And not and a single not person one, 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 knew right. how to handle that right. situation. And, and so let's talk about this awareness, why mm -hmm. we're here, this opioid. At a minimum, we should be, as human beings, have enough compassion or enough vision to notice that what we're seeing is not good, it's wrong, that that person is in some need of help. Even mm -hmm. if you can't provide the assistance, call someone right. that can. Mm -hmm. Sitting there, they're judging them, saying they're not going to... Go back to his Burger King. What does that do? Right. Tell yeah. me how that helps anybody. Doesn't okay, mean. all you're doing is giving that child in the car a message that to discount people. St don't help. Don't you know? And and I think that that's part of the mentality change. I really hope that. And there, there's the breakdown for me in church. As far as there used to be, one thing a church teaches is compassion. It teaches Absolutely. empathy. It teaches kindness. And when you break that down, where are people learning this? Well, right. obviously the people in the car didn't learn this. Right. You know, because their first thing is to judge this person, kick them to the curb. And that's what me as a parent, that's what my voice needs to be. My voice needs to be, hey, let's all realize we're all people. We're all right. humans. We're all flawed. And we all need help. And isolation is the worst for anything. Right. Yeah. I don't yeah. want these people with drugs. That's the biggest problem with fighting drug addiction is these people find each other. Yeah. Addicts find other addicts because right. no one wants to be isolated. And they're accepted there. They are. They are. And that's why I say I'm so, I'm thanking myself for opening my eyes to at least that. Right. Mm. You know, isolation is the worst thing for any being anywhere, anytime. Our minds can, can, can really play games on us. And now enter drugs. All these drugs. What is heroin doing? Opioids doing? All these. And they're lacing everything. This problem is right. going to get bigger. Right. It's going to go beyond opioid. It's big drug addiction. Yeah. Okay. Or if, if I could ask, like, one thing, and I don't know, Rich, like, who the primary audience of Harford County Living podcast is, but between eight, believe it or not, between uh, from the records I got last time, primary is between thirty four and fifty five. But we do have some between eighteen to thirty four too. So we we have some young listeners. So whoever it may be, I, I feel somebody who's listening to Harford County Living podcast mm -hmm. may be in that group that doesn't necessarily feel is as affected by this problem. Um, maybe this episode might be a little different because of the subject matter and maybe the description will be different. But if you're somebody who feels like this really isn't your problem, or if you feel, if you've even had that thought during this discussion, I just want to make a personal appeal. And this is nobody else. This is just me, Adam. You can yell at me later if you want. Um, to the, the thing that I would ask you to try to find within yourself is a little bit of humility and just to, to get to a point where you can say, you know what, this has been going on. Everybody else is talking about this. It hasn't really influenced me. It hasn't come into my sphere. It doesn't <clears throat> seem to affect me all that much. I don't really know what everybody else's problem is. And if, if you have that thought about, oh, the, the people who do this are just irresponsible. The people who do this are are crazy or stupid or whatever, whatever that thought may be, a little bit of humility, I think, would go a long way. And, uh, and the reason that that is, is, is because 
as we get further and further into this problem and it becomes more and more prevalent, there are still going to be pockets of people who aren't affected by this, but everybody else is going to know that it's not a junkie. It's, it's not, it's not somebody who's wholly irresponsible or stupid or crazy. It's, it's my son, it's my nephew, it's my daughter, it's my friend's daughter. It's, it's my kid's best friend that's getting involved in this. And if you're presenting an attitude where you're outside of the fray and whether you mean to or not, if you're judgmental about it at all, if you're presenting a front where people can't come and talk about this problem and be honest about this problem to the point where people are scared to talk to you about this openly, that's one of the problems that made this get to this point to begin with. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, here, here's something I want, I, and I want to challenge the younger people out there on this. Uh, where, you know, if they say it's not a problem in my area, we don't know anybody. First thing, I want you to, you know, walk around your shopping center, walk around your park, walk around anywhere and just look down and see how many needles you see mm-hmm. because you do. Right. The other thing, and I want to, I would love to challenge the younger, younger people for this, and I may be opening up a can of worms here, you know, with, with the school shootings, they had the National Walkout Day. Mm-hmm. You know, they are quick to jump onto something like that. Mm-hmm. The opioid problem is a bigger problem, I believe. Yes. 17 people Why not do something for that? Versus 114 a day. Yeah. 116, 116 a day. a day. Across the country. <clears throat> so while you don't see it, and maybe that's it. Maybe it takes, you know, a certain kind of person to be able to see something outside of yeah. their direct field of vision to really exercise some compassion and some sympathy. But this will get bigger. Yeah. If we don't mm-hmm. do something about it now, and what is that? It's exactly what we're doing right now. It's getting... Everybody together that has some impact because that will open the doors for government agencies right. to want to do more. They, there's been this disconnect in politics between people and politicians. That needs to come together too, Absolutely. that they're really serving our purpose and they're doing what we call them to do. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I am seeing more people get into politics nowadays, I think, that really want to make a difference, you know, because we, we had this conversation before the mic came on about greed. You know, we kind of got to put our priorities in a little bit of perspective because we as an American society seem to focus on what we can do for ourselves. How does this benefit me personally, my personal wealth, my personal education? You know, all of these things about, you've watched the community dissolve a little bit and people become more isolated. I'm lucky enough to have good neighbors and know my neighbors. People have become their own little, in their bubbles. And so this, maybe this epidemic is going to bring us out of that. And call us to duty and to service. Because I do think the one thing that's helped me through this, I've always been kind of a a person of service, but it really calls me to service. And I think that part of depression and part of isolation, if you really want to do something that has impact in your own life, there is no way, if you're suffering from depression at this moment, if you don't go out and help somebody else, you won't feel better immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and that's what addicts are doing. They're helping each other through this process. Um, You know, I could live without another story on someone that died in jail because the jail wasn't willing to help them through detox. This is happening. I'm seeing people, I'm I'm friends with parents that this happens to. Mm -hmm. This isn't in some far off land. So, I mean, we're not even doing the minimum to help the people we can. Yeah. So by opening up, you know, they should be shamed. We shouldn't be shaming people. We should be shaming organizations that aren't doing enough. And a jail that has the ability to help someone isn't, and this is acceptable, as soon as that hits the news, why, why aren't there more people standing up? You know, raise your fist, fight for something that has some impact greater than yourself. Right. Because everybody wants to get involved and, you know, me too. You know, I'm guilty to some degree of my own, you know, getting involved in myself. But now this was my son, and I'm not doing this for him anymore. I'm doing it to help somebody else so that they don't have to live through this. You know, it, does, it doesn't cost you anything to be kind to someone. It doesn't. doesn't. It? And, and I don't care where that is. It could be opening the door for someone. It could be helping somebody in the grocery line. It may be starting a conversation that, that you're standing in Walmart, you know, just talking to people. We're living in such a, a me and I society that we're not afraid to just go and, and reach out to say hello to someone or be kind to someone. We don't know that person's battle that they're facing when they're walking into a supermarket. Just by opening a door for someone 
and saying, you know, you know, I'll, I'll get that for you. We can spread kindness around, and it starts with us getting out of this shell of, well, I, it's, you know, I want to see what's best for me, what's best for I, and this kind of stuff. And we've just got to take the blinders off and start looking at our communities and saying, we are sitting back watching our communities implode, and, and, and it's got to stop. Look, we had a cigarette problem, and there still is a cigarette problem. But as you've seen, cigarette mm -hmm. numbers have come Way plummeted less. down because people got proactive. People talked about it. The cigarette companies finally got mm -hmm. drilled in the side of the head saying, you guys got to do something about this. And so it can happen now, but it all starts with you. A random, an, an act of random kindness, an arc. We need a to be, be able kind to campaign. It's cool be, be kind. Mm -hmm. Be kind to people. Be it's nice good. to people. I don't... Well, social media will show I, you that more people will comment or get involved in a negative oh, post yes. and we than will about ever this coming get involved in. in a positive post. The hypocrisy in church has got to stop. There you go. That's There's so much judgmental about, people. about inside the church. church. Yeah. And, and, and so we've got to realize that at least, and I know you would do this, I don't care what you wear, how you're dressed, what you believe. You are welcome. You know, that's bottom line. We have got to open the doors of everywhere saying everybody matters. Everybody is 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 a, a, a human being. Life does matter. We care about your life. And start being kind to people. If we could just get that, we might be able to make a difference. You know, the thing is the difference yeah. between light and dark. The <clears throat> things that come out in the light are healed. Things Absolutely. that stay in the dark grow fungus and die. I mean, that's I, local, by the way. I, I, I don't. And I've never. Been, you don't have to be like I've never been spent any time right. in church, and I've never read right. the Bible. But yet, I've grown to. I'm a, such a spiritual person as far as that goes, and I love these things. I feel like I should know because I always go, "Oh, that resonates with me right. so much." Um, but it's it is the way that um, you know. There, I go back to the old soul mentality. You know, you're a, a byproduct of uh, maybe it was I had really good parents. While they may have divorced, uh, you know, they were they were really... It. And I often wonder about that because I try not to judge other situations like riots and, you know, those kinds of things to say, well, they didn't have the benefit of support or knowledge or, you know, it, it, it's... But the, the, everything starts with judgment. We really need mm -hmm. to try to make people... If you want to shame somebody, shame them for judging. Right. Shame them for vilifying. Shame them for, for acting in a way that is anything less than being a kind human being. Right. And maybe yeah. kindness will start to, to be... You know, something that's cool. Be cool to right. be kind rather than, you know, because it, it really pains well, I like me to that. see. Cool to be kind. Cool to be kind. That sounds it, like a song. It's a song. Well, 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 the cool song was kind. cruel to be kind. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, 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 a cool to be kind campaign. Yeah. I really think that that's yeah, the next cool movement kind. that we need. And, and, you know, people need to feel bad that the bullying, if it wasn't cool to bully, it would stop. So we need to stop. Right. Mm -hmm. And that touches every facet of everything. And maybe the simplest thing, don't engage. Mm -hmm. When you see a negative post, and social media, Please rather than jumping right. on the bandwagon, and you, you don't know half of the story anyway. You know what I'm saying? You're just this is one person's perspective of, you know, people will judge based on one thing they've heard. They they don't know if there's any truth to it, and all of a sudden they're jumping on this bandwagon. Stop! Just stop it. You know, be they, pleasant, they just, be kind. They just look at the headline. That's they do, and they don't even know the backstory. And most right. of the time, most of the time, if people took the time. And they really knew the whole story. If you walked a mile in somebody's shoes, you'd right. really learn a lot. That education, we're all lacking that. And I don't know where it comes from in the human soul or the life that, that we, we judge first and ask questions later. And if we have to teach ourselves not to do that, then we should be teaching that first and foremost. Yeah. And if that starts in families, or it starts. Yeah. But, but really, that's where this starts. I think with the young people, it, it begins with trying to be relevant. And, and they. they, they uh, they have to feel that they have to say something. You know, I, I kid people all the time that you know that, that put on a po or respond to a post like you're 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 talking about. Uh, whether they say anything or not, they just have to put one or two words on there because they feel they have to be relevant. I've right. got to be a part of this. And it goes back to you know we we're talking about um, kids walking out of school and and things of that nature. What I. I I look back at these protests, you know, like, like, um, uh, what's that kid, uh, Trayvon Martin in Florida, you know, he had these protests all across the country and it's watching the news. They're interviewing these young people in San Francisco and Los Angeles and all that. Why are you here? My friends are here. <laughs> That's all it is. They don't know what's going on. They don't know why this, right. 
uh, this got to this level or, or what the real problem is, my friends are here. I got to do what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same thing, I think, with uh, not only with the kindness, but I think you, you, you have to demonize. Um, you know, cigarettes, not people. I mean, yes, yes. Cigarettes were a demon, guns are a demon. Um, heroin is a demon. Heroin is a demon, but heroin is not a tangible demon for most of us. Uh, and by us, I mean the right. community. Yeah, yeah. I, I where, get you. Where yeah. cigarettes are in your face, yeah, right. yeah. alcohol is gotcha. in your face. Gun. You've it's got not to, as visible. Right. right. You've got to make it tangible. Because it's not legal. Addictionism yeah. is visible. Right. If, if you make it a tangible, opioids are a tangible demon. Right. And you start and you begin that education, you know, filing lawsuits against pharma, pharmaceutical companies, things like that doesn't do anything. It just yeah. lines the pockets of lawyers and, right. and others. It doesn't tell your kids anything, you know, uh, it, it doesn't really teach us anything. But if, if we can get the message out there that the opi- opioids are a demon that affect everybody, as you were saying, whether you use it or not, it, uh, the family member, the the clergy, the uh, the hospitals, the you know the undertakers, what have you, everybody is affected in one way or another. Absolutely. There is a choice and, here, yeah. N- not to be confused with. I, I get a little bent over the whole people saying addiction is a choice. You could put there. There's there's some ignorance in that, but there is a there. This is controllable. This isn't like cancer in the sense that well, maybe there are some things that you can do to prevent you know your your odds, but. The bottom line is there is a choice in the beginning, mm-hmm. initially. Mm-hmm. That's what we have to teach. Right. Is that's where you have to demonize something, where you have to not right. pick up. I remember growing up, I remember being afraid of heroin. Mm-hmm. Just it was something yeah. that now people in school died or it was much less prevalent. But I remember thinking I would never ever touch it. I knew. How did I know that? And that's what we need to get to with the right. young people because the addiction, again, not knowing whether you're have an addictive personality or not, there are still people they it, I can't believe it can smoke and then not smoke because mm-hmm. I was a smoker for 25 years right. and it took mm-hmm. me a lot to be able to quit. Okay. So fortunately for me, I didn't pick up other things that could be worse. Um, you know, but that's the problem. You got to stop it before it starts because mm-hmm. these people, if you hear the stories in recovery, they are powerful. Mm-hmm. And, and I, my heart not only goes out to people with addiction but man, they are warriors. These people that are fighting addiction, they are the strongest people I know. They are, because it's every day. Every day they're faced with things that could trigger them. They're faced with um, their, their past demons. They're faced with their temptations. They're faced with their... That, that's a, if you listen to what goes on in their minds, somebody that's never lived through addiction, and especially that type of addiction, because I'm starting to gather, and I'm no medical professional that the heroin addiction is truly a demon. I mean, it really, what it does inside your brain, what it does to these people, uh, it it does to animals like monkeys. They've done tests on this, um, is huge. So to be able to stand in judgment and say, you should just stop or you should just, it's worse than cigarettes. Mm -hmm. There's no heroin patch. No. You know, so so how do we get to where we need to get to be able to start this? Um, but yeah, you're right. With the de- he needs to be a demon. And at, to at, Emory, at Emory, we started, and here's the other part of all this resource. At Emory, we started a parent group that meets every first Tuesday of the month. Uh, Tom Yingling, who lost uh, a loved one, started this, where the parents of those that are going through rehab or sober living, as the case may be, or just dealing with someone in their family, are meeting, and, and it's amazing. That it's an avenue for them to ask questions that they probably wouldn't ask anywhere else. Sure, it's safe. And knowing that they yeah, have others safe. around them that are dealing with the same exact thing, and they have created this bond and this community, and some of them still coming back, even after someone has left Emory House or Char Hope, still coming back because they still need that reinforcement. Really, when you look at it, the families themselves are addicted to this problem. And they need to have their voices heard or just ask questions where they don't know where to ask or where to go to help them out. And so it's been a really big resource. I'd like to know statistically how many lives one addict affects. Mm. How many lives does one addict touch? It's it's so broad. Mm -hmm. Um, You can... And everyone's everyone's a story. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, we all have stories. I mean, each, each individual. Oh, absolutely. It's a life. Yes. It's a it's it a is. lessons. It's a 
it's and everybody deals with it differently. Yeah. Everybody deals with and it differently. And there's no age limit on this. We were I'm talking about this. You. There's no age limit. There is no, uh, you know, professional rating in your life. You know whether you have or have not ages, where you're from, what community you're in, whether you're from Edgewood or Falston or Bel Air or can affect or, or Street or whatever the case may be. It's Good. everywhere, and this is where it's going to have to take. And as as they say, a community of hope and kindness. I can't mm-hmm. get that enough. Just be nice to people, please. You don't know what battle they're facing each and every day. Be forgiving. Absolutely. Be forgiving. If you are... There's um, no perfect person out there. I need that. to tell you that. And nobody wants to be an addict. No. Nobody wants to be they don't in that situation. They say, hey, guess what? I'm going to be an addict. They don't. No, that doesn't and they, they know they're judged. Yeah. And they hide in the... It's, it's terrible. Yeah. If you are on the front lines of this, um, basically every... Everything, go back to earlier in the episode where Steve read off the list of groups that are going to be at the concert on June 3rd. But also, I know just down here on, on the 40 corridor, um, or I guess the county would want me to call it the science and security corridor. But um, <laughs> okay. uh, any sheriff's precinct, so the northern precinct, if you're in the northern end of the county and southern precinct, um, Upper Chesapeake has... Naxalone trainings frequently. If you're looking for that kind of stuff, you can go there and seek out information. Um, the Epicenter in Edgewood and the Hartford Community Action Agency have been partnering together for opioid trainings, uh, Narcan trainings, things like that. So, I mean, if, if things are getting really, really bad, even those resources are out there. If things aren't that bad yet and, and you're thinking maybe it's time to start being a little proactive, Go talk to the schools. Go talk to other community groups. Get involved in local government. And just that kind of stuff is... It's never... And, and as, as hard as it may be, knowing that your son is gone, it's proof that it's never too late to get involved. It's never too late to start dealing with this. Yeah, and unfortunately, it takes too many of us the worst-case scenario, um, you know, before, before you get to the best-case scenario. So... Mm-hmm. I don't know where we went. Well, yeah. The spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, everybody has a story, and I don't want my story to be everybody's story. You know, so there are things that can be done now. Take that action. Do what you have to do. Um, you know, but again, do it with kindness. If you have to report somebody, uh, try to find them help. Reach out. You know, a better source of a better source of resources would be beneficial. I like that this. I'm interested in all these people going to the concert, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd like to try to come up with a way to uh, focus, you know. Yeah. This does this, this does this, this does, you know, one-stop shopping kind of a, a speak-to-me campaign or, or what have you. I'm When I'm out and I'm at shows, um, I break down every time a parent comes up to me to buy a heart because it's... Oh, good. And yeah. it happens all the time. And, and there's a lot of people doing a lot. I'd like to see it come together yeah if, if I'd like to see it. it's so disconnected yeah. it's disjointed right now um, you know because it's like the wave at a, at a stadium if one person stands up it's not much of a wave <laughs> you know but then it starts a section and then the section and it's nice to see it go all the way around completely and finish and so you know I'd like to get together with some of these groups and and, and somehow you know connect more parents and become a larger wave yeah. Yeah, I worry about people that are shy, yeah. that that are more inward and and uh, introverted. Sure. Introverted, yeah. That that's another concern. People that uh, that that don't really talk to others. I mean, if, there are neighbors like that too. That they kind of they'll wave, but they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't talk about things. So. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of those people have would have great. And I used to be one of them. I was very introverted. Um, and, and just force myself to turn turn that around as I got older. But, you know, a lot of those people, they are. They're afraid to speak, but they have great ideas, mm-hmm. and they can make That's a difference. True. But then, yeah. you know, you, you got to find a way to open them up. Um, I don't have that answer. I mean, I did it for myself. but uh, Well, this concert yeah. provides one opportunity, but there are others. You know, if you don't come to the concert, search for opportunities to find out about opioid addiction. Sure. And because is, it's so important. Can you comment? I mean, yeah. when this airs and people read it, you know, feel free to comment suggestions, oh, ideas. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, and that's one of the reasons when I when I put put it up, 
I also share you know, it. Well, like, yeah, but I yeah. create a post so people can mm-hmm. comment on it instead of just saying it's on iTunes, whatever. If you're in a position of power where you can actually affect something, if you have a television station, if you have a, a magazine, if you have, if you're in a position to spread this word greater than just outside of your network, reach mm-hmm. out to somebody in this group. Do something. Yeah. And know, I'll be talking less. about it on my radio show next Wednesday morning. Rich knows I do a, a radio show, Great. volunteer up at WHFC. Fabulous. And with those characters up there, <laughs> and uh, do a classical morning, you know, classical. And next Wednesday morning, we'll be talking about this too. Ninety-one one, just in case. Anybody FM. FM. Great. FM. Right. Great. Can they well, call in? Uh, you can call in and talk to me. Yay! <laughs> but I don't know how to put people on the air. I don't think I want to do. No. Because people will call in and say, Sheldon, why did you play that piece on the radio? It was awful. So. I don't think I've ever heard you play a bass. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> and you know, if you're looking for other communities, I'll plug my church. You can come take a nap in the pews while I'm preaching <laughs> with the rest of my church and be part of that sleeping community. And that That's church is what again? Joppatown Christian Church. Hey, you know, speaking of community, I want to thank all of you for. I mean, Sheldon, Lyle, Adam, Teresa, all of you do Steve. stuff Steve. in Steve, they, All of you do stuff in the community. And that's something I would like to see more people do. Yeah. Uh, and, and Adam, Teresa, and Lyle, you, you both know this. We, um, on, on Facebook especially, somebody will post something and you'll see somebody complain about something. But that person that complains about it does not get involved in the community. No. Too no. many people complain but don't get involved. It's a lot of opinions, but nobody, you know, I always, I came from the philosophy of uh, don't bring me a problem, bring me a solution, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and I think if, if you notice something or recognize something and you have an idea or a way to fix it or even, you know, just to share in a positive way, it's much better than getting anywhere and complaining because right. people, I don't think enough people realize that complaints get tuned out, you mm-hmm. know, that you become this now, okay, you're somebody that's always complaining about everything, so people turn it, turn off. You know, and then that voice that you're trying to get out there, well, that complaint is falling on deaf ears. I really do think yeah. that generally, you know, people will follow yeah. uh, a good idea, a good mission, a good statement, a good, you know, and I have always found myself to be, I have a voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never been shy, um, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have, have a past and those kinds of things that made me stronger so that I don't, you know, buckle, I don't feel bad. I, I, I don't want to ever... Be considered confrontational, not confrontational. I think you're put in the places that you need to be, and there are no coincidences. So if this baton has been handed to me uh, to be the mother, you know, uh, then then yeah. So but don't you think artists often are all the front runners on some of these things? And I'm told as an artist, yeah. me too. I just find that, and this is just my personal spiritual belief, that artists tend to be old souls. They tend to be at the end of the physical. Uh, they've lived a lot, we'll say, mm-hmm. and um, maybe we're given this gift, this vision, this creativity. Um, not always voices, but you know, I think that you're supposed to work with what you have. Mm-hmm. And I was one that when this happened, um, you know, I have my own story. It's an interesting story, um, you know, as far as my spirituality, how it's tied to this, and the number that this number, the day my son died, followed me for seven years, as if it was a, a you know, a, a, not an omen, but you know, I just feel like this is my path. And um, if this is going to be the course that I've been given, then I'm going to do the most powerful things that I can do with the things that are going to touch the most lives. Yeah. Uh, it's already touched mine. And um, one of the messages that I want to give to any parent that's out there that's maybe in my situation where you've already had this loss is the most important thing that I see parents do that I really wish they would stop doing is stop killing your children over and over mm-hmm. and over again. They died once. They're at peace. Let them be at peace. Oh. Do something positive, Amen. because they hang on these this death. They hang on the death itself. They hang on how they how they passed. They worry. Did they suffer? Did they? And they they're stuck in this rut. Mm-hmm. And they need to realize it happened once. You're killing your child over and over mm-hmm. and over again. Right. That time, don't do it to yourself. The only person you're hurting is you. And so, you know, we carry our grief. We do with it what we have to do with it. Um, but. If you take that and turn it into something positive, Uh, then that grief isn't depression. That grief is... Well, I will say this. I've made it my mission from the very first day not to allow his death to steal my joy. Well, you're living out his legacy. Mm -hmm. You're living it out for Mm -hmm. him. My mission. And going and and being on the front lines Mm -hmm. to say, okay, I know I've had this pain and grief, but I am not going to 
sit and dwell on that. I need to go out because there's somebody else just like him mm -hmm. that needs to have the resources, the voice, the compassion, the love, the care, non-judgmental, the whole things that right. you said right. that maybe we're missing at that point. You know, and, and the thing of it is, it is something that we need to be. Th this can't be just a podcast and just, oh, we're sitting around talking about it. Oh, no, no, we have to be, and you said it again, and that's a great word, proactive. Challenges me. This challenges yeah. me. And we challenge each other, Being too. Here, to do the this. energy in this room brings it to a higher level. Absolutely. And, and, and to everybody and out there. It's amazing when you can sit around a round table and talk yeah, about this. Yeah, we're the talking, things talking. Why can't talking. we get this in our government agency? Why can't we get the, yeah, right. the, the Republicans and Democrats sit around and talk around? Well, the next time we invite politicians and we, yeah. we hold them to sit around and talk. Uh, you know? it, is, it is worth mentioning. I, I had a conversation with Cindy Mundy, who's the uh, Director of Governmental Relations for Hartford County, uh, just last week at a school board meeting. Um, and she said that the county, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I'm going to, so, uh, <laughs> she said, editing in this? <laughs> oh, yeah, I edit she said that the county is about to start this campaign that was started in like Frederick, I think called choose civility. And a lot of the things that you're talking about, Steve, are, are things that they're going to try to do. Basically the whole de-escalation of conflict, just trying to be nicer to one another. Um, there's a, also a program that Pam Taylor over at the uh, Joppa branch of the Hartford County Library told me about uh, called The Longest Table, which is basically they just set up this really super long table and you sit there and one side moves down one by one by one. You just have a conversation with the person across from you and the county's going to set that you up. You don't have to date them probably, right? <laughs> it's not the way the yeah, it's, it's, does. Oh. it's speed dating for your community. <laughs> um, but they're going to have that at the Harford County Farm Fair this year. So um, all kinds of stuff. The, the, I will say, I mean, you know, the government's not uh, completely inept. Just mostly, and um, it's just behind. It needs to be steered, mm -hmm. steered, and in there the needs direction. to be debates mm -hmm. yeah. about a lot of stuff, right. mm -hmm. including this. But if we would just come to the table with some compassion yeah. and kindness for the person that's sitting across the table from you, you may not believe the same thing, but it doesn't mean you can't sit and eat at the same table. Right. Right. True. Very you know. true. But you can have the same goals. Absolutely. Right. Stuff needs to. This needs to. Stop. How do you? And then the goal is sitting here. How do we eradicate this exactly. problem to zero? That it's just a thing of the past. And there are other problems, but let's deal with this. Right. right. This is definitely a big problem. This is this is something we need to deal with. Right. And uh, and and we need we need to be able to deal with this without the other what ifs. Yeah. Well, right. well or what about? Right. Let's deal with this. Mm -hmm. Right. And. To, to piggyback that, parents need to know that, well, what if I do say, thing? what if I go out in public, say, my son or daughter, or what if, you know, don't. You know, fear is the greatest, oh my gosh. fear is the greatest hindrance of all of this. You know, fear oh, is, oh, that, yeah, you know, I don't want anybody to know, or I don't want anybody, mm -hmm. gosh, what if the neighbors find out? And really? I'm so no. the opposite. I wear it like a badge. I've got this beautiful tattoo on my arm that I've, Invested in. Did that hurt? Um, it, oh, Did it hurt? Not as much as childbirth. That's right. <laughs> not as much as childbirth. He's talking to five <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was a breeze. Yeah. Um, but I wear it, and you know, I work for. Um, the, uh, I'm on civic time today to do this. I work for mm -hmm. Mitre, who has uh, who has now a campaign and hope um, uh, some kind of mission to help Mitre. the op Mitre. Yeah, uh, MIT Research is what it was, but it's a government, okay. FFRDC, okay. Uh, but that's part of their mission. Um, and they, it's a very professional environment, and um, it, I've been very public. Um, yeah. I've never been shamed about how my son died, why he died, um, and that's why I said if that voice, this is not something, I, I stand proud. And again, I stand, I'm proud of my son. Um, you know, I, I don't know what more that you can say, whoever you're... Ch you're given, people are in your life for a reason, okay? Right. I'm his mother right. for a reason. I have right. the tools and resources I have for a reason. Shame on me if I'm not doing right. something with them um, <clears throat> to empower other people that don't. If I was given a voice, that means there's 10 people behind me that don't have it. Right. Right. So it's my job. It's my you know, task to point. help other people. So, you know, use, use the tools, the weapons, the things that you've been given, the God-given talent 
Uh, because if you keep it for yourself, you've got to give it away to get it. You've got to share it. You've right. got to give it away to keep it. And the longer and the longer you keep it in the closet, you just might as well say, I'm an enabler for this. Uh, it's you're hurting. You're absolutely. you're hurting yourself. You're right. hurting you're hurting, hurting others. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hurting others. Bring it out. Everything's good in the light. Stop. Absolutely. And and those that will judge you, you don't need them anyway. Nope. You know, you'll find, there's plenty of people that will help you and support you and get you where you need to be so that you can help other people. And hopefully we can diminish, you know, too much. Hang around with people that degrade you and, and or just <coughs> I can negativity. Always say, yeah. I can always say people that don't know any better. I want to be around people who are nice and happy and laughing mm -hmm. and smiling. Negativity breeds negativity. It does. Well, you know it what? Does. I've always said you can't ha never judge a person by their circumstances. Right. Now, I choose to hang out with people that have a great moral compass because I feel like I gain from, from my association. Mm -hmm. So those people that operate with integrity... They operate with truth. They operate with visibility because we shouldn't be ashamed of anything. No. Being mm -hmm. human is a condition. Right. Okay, I'm here. I consider myself Nobody's a soul perfect. living a human. Right. I'm having a human experience is what I'm having, mm -hmm. and that's you know what I want to lead with. And I think that those people that gravitate to you lead with the same. They look for that leadership, and those that don't, I call them cruddy buddies. Allow <laughs> them to hang out with the people that will take them down because right. eventually they'll cannibalize themselves. Right. You don't need them, you know, nope. growth. It doesn't matter if it's two people or three people. Eventually that path is going to take you, you know, to a path of greatness and helping and there's mm -hmm. a much greater reward elsewhere. So it's cool to be kind. It's cool to be kind. Cool to be kind, I like yeah. that. Yeah. That might have to be the headline for this panel. Cool to be kind. That's how kind. Better than three DJs walking to a bar with nobody else that I had the last time. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, thanks. Uh, well, anybody want anything to add? We've actually gone over an hour. Yeah. 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 It's so come out, to the, come out to the concert June 3rd, yes. uh, 7 p.m. at the Bell Air Band Shell, close to the library. Uh, bring WWW. Chair, bring your blanket. Exactly. Bring your... Bring uh, your mouthpiece. Yeah. Bring your chair, bring your mouthpiece. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Watch Sheldon and swing his hands. That thing. And uh, at another young man, Jamie Reeves from Peabody, will be up. Uh, there'll be a food truck. And at this point, we don't have an inclement weather place it might and be well the Harford County place. Sheriff's trailer will be there the Harford County Sheriff's trailer will be there which is super uh, so we have a lot of organizations that are really back uh, you're backing this um, and uh, ssorchestra.org is the website or Google Sheldon Bear B-A-I-R if you can you know to, just to make sure the, the, the community of hope information's on there and this will just not be just a one-stop shop. This will be something that will have legs. And I promise that it will have legs. We have so many people that are involved with this. We cannot allow... And like I said, there's two words there, community and hope. We've got to bring that together. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the things I'd like to do, if it's okay with all of you, let's come back in six months, do it again, and hopefully that national number right. would have dropped. Right. And I'm going to put in a plug for myself. Of course. Again, um, what I do or my mission to help raise money and awareness is the Open Hearts Project for Opioid Awareness. Um, the group is on Facebook under the Open Hearts for Opioid Awareness. And there's a Shop Now button in Etsy. And um, all of the profits from the heart pins, they're beautiful. They are colored um, so that um, they represent loss. So a purple one represents, you know, someone that's passed from the addiction yellow represents recovery they each have a thing a mission you can go on and see the mission statement but there's an etsy shop which is open hearts project the number 40a and you can see these beautiful creations that go for a great cause and they're also a fabulous gift um, of understanding if you give someone you know one of these pens it, it means a lot to that person that has experienced that loss it says hey i relate outstanding well i want to thank you all for coming on thank and, you um thanks rich once again, anybody, if you want to come on the Hartford County Living Podcast, uh, whether it's business organization, individual, it's free to come on. Uh, just contact us, podcast at hartfordcountyliving.com. Um, and like I said, hopefully we'll be back in six months to talk about this again and that 116 people a day will drop. Be nice yes, if you drop to zero. Yes. yes. So uh, once right. again, thank you. And uh, June 3rd, get up there. Thanks. Thank you. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, 
gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 